Hare Krishna, we continue reading from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 6, Dhyan Yog. We are on text 34. Chanchalam hi mana Krishna, pramati balavadridam, tasyaham nigraham manye vayor iva sudushkaram. Chanchalam hi mana Krishna. Arjun, yesterday also he told Krishna, Krishna, you're telling me to do this Ashtanga Yoga, but this is impractical and it is endurable. So Arjuna is sincere. He wants to have perfection. and But he's telling Krishna, my dear Krishna, Ashtanga Yoga for me is impractical and endurable. That was 5,000 years ago. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. The mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna. And to subdue it, I think, is more difficult than controlling the wind. Chanchalam Himana Krishna. And the mind is very restless. You see our mind, how it can take us, you know. One moment we are in Taiwan, another moment we will be in another part of the world, a third moment we'll be somewhere else. It drives us crazy. And turbulent, obstinate, obstinate. I don't know if you all have been in that position. I have. You know, I have to do something, do something, do something. No, don't do it. You're tired. It's okay. And very strong. So Krishna, Arjuna is telling Krishna, it's very difficult to overcome the mind. The mind is so strong and obstinate that it sometimes overcomes the intelligence, although the mind is supposed to be subservient to the intelligence. So actually, we are supposed to control the mind by our intelligence. And how do we purify our intelligence? Hearing and chanting. That's right. The more we hear and chant, by hearing from the scriptures, when we are hearing from scriptures, our mind gets, uh, our intelligence gets purified, becomes stronger, then gets easier to control the mind. For a man in the practical world who has to fight so many opposing elements, it is certainly, <laughs> I'm sorry, very difficult to control the mind. Artificially, one may establish a mental equilibrium both toward friend and enemy, but ultimately, no worldly man can do so, for this is more difficult than controlling the raging wind. So artificially, we may try to think, oh, I have an equilibrium now. Now I am Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu. <clears throat> you know, now I'm seeing everyone equal. There's no one's my friend, no one's an enemy. But if we are doing it artificially, we won't be able to do it for very long. Maybe we can do it for one hour, if even, one day, two days, one month, one year. But we will fall from that position until unless we really fix the mind on Krishna. Until unless we really fix it on Krishna. In the Vedic literature, Katha Upanishad, one dot three, three to four, it is said. Atmanam ratinam vidhi, shariram ratham evacha, buddhim tu sarathim vidhi, manapra. Graham evacha, Indriani hayan ahur, Vishayam steshu gocharan, Atme indriya mano yuktam, Bhokteti ahur manishinaha. So now the Katha Upanishad is giving this beautiful, in, in Bhagavad Gita book, you see we have that photo of the chariot. The mind is there in the chariot, and there are these five horses. And there is a person, there's a driver, and then there is a passenger. And if you see in Bhagavad Gita as it is, one of the pictures is this. So it is describing this verse from Katha Upanishad. The individual is the passenger in the car of the material body. So we, we are the passenger, the soul. This material body is a vehicle. And the intelligence is the driver. The mind is the driving instrument and the senses are the horses. So in that picture, the horses, the five horses, they are the senses, the eyes, ears, nose, uh, tongue, and the skin. And then the mind, mind is the reins. You know, you the, the, there's a driver, the person who's driving the horse cart. How does he control it? There's this, this rope which is binding the horse to the cart and the driver is holding this rope. The, that is called the reins. So this, this rope, the reins is the mind 
and the driver is the intelligence. The passenger is the soul. And this whole chariot, this whole car, this whole horse carriage, that is the body. The self is thus the enjoyer or sufferer in the association of the mind and senses. So it is understood by great thinkers. Intelligence is supposed to direct the mind, but the mind is so strong and obstinate that it often overcomes even one's own intelligence as an acute infection may surpass the efficacy of medicine. So what is supposed to happen is that, suppose, okay, we sit down in a, in a taxi and we tell the taxi driver, you, I want to go to the airport, but the driver does not listen to us and we end up going very far away somewhere, you know, and we have a flight to catch and then we are going to get anxiety and all the fears. Why? Because the driver is not listening to us. The real thing is supposed to be we sit and we are supposed to tell the driver, where do you go? And the driver is supposed to take us there, right? Huh? That is the original thing. But now what has happened is that we have given all the control to the mind. So wherever the mind takes us, we are going there. The mind is not even listening to our intelligence. And the mind is doing whatever it wants. And why is that? Because we are not controlling the senses. The senses are not controlled. So wherever the senses goes, the mind is going. Huh? And imagine... The one of the sense is going one direction, another is going another direction. So the mind is also going in all sorts of different directions. And so that's why the passenger is having such a bumpy ride. The passenger is us. So such a strong mind is supposed to be controlled by the practice of yoga, but such practice is never practical for a worldly person like Arjuna. And what can we say of modern man? So we are supposed to control the mind. That's why Krishna was telling him, you do yoga. But Arjuna is saying, hey, I have to do my duty. I'm Kshatriya. I do this. I do that. I cannot go and sit in the forest and meditate. So what, what about us? What about us? How can we control our mind then? The simile used here is appropriate one. One cannot capture the blowing wind. And it is even more difficult to capture the turbulent mind. Krishna. So Arjuna is saying, you know what, Krishna? The wind is difficult to capture, but I think for me, it's easier that I will be able to capture the wind, but I won't be able to capture the mind. So Arjuna is being really realistic. He really understands. The easiest way to control the mind, as suggested by Lord Chaitanya, is chanting Hare Krishna, the great mantra for deliverance in all humility. So that's the reason Krishna came 500 years ago to give us this chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He knew we can't do anything. So he's given us the most potent, the most effective, the most strongest means, control the mind. He says, you just chant Hare Krishna. This is the great mantra for deliverance in all humility he's telling us to chant. Great mantra for deliverance, it will deliver us. You know, just by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, how? In humility. Just start chanting. Just start chanting. The method prescribed is Savai Mana Krishna Padara Vindayo. One must engage one's mind fully in Krishna. Only then will there remain no other engagements to agitate the mind. So the mind can find its refuge only in Krishna. We may think that our, my mind will be peaceful here and there. No, but the mind can be peaceful only when it's connected to Krishna. We can try it. We can try it and we can see that how peaceful the mind gets when we connect it to Krishna, when we fix it to Krishna. When then somebody will say, what, hold you have to sit and meditate and think on Krishna? No, Krishna is not telling that to Arjuna. Krishna is saying, you fix your mind on me and you do your duty. So that's what we have to do. First, fix our mind on Krishna and do our duty. Now, how do we fix our mind on Krishna? Lord Chaitanya is saying, you chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra and then you do your duties. And automatically we can get perfection.
So the entire process has become so simple for us, but we are so unfortunate that we don't want to take it up. That is our misfortune. Lord Chaitanya is giving us this mercy freely. And if we don't take it, that is our misfortune. But somehow or the other, we should just do it. No, whatever it is, I'm going to do it. I will chant Hare Krishna. I will hear. I will hear. Take out some time to hear and chant. Is that okay? And the mind will get controlled. Yeah. So continue hearing and chant. That's all. That's all. So we'll stop here for today. Thank you so much for listening and joining. And did you want to, did anyone want to add anything or comment anything? Or... No. But that's right. Yeah, very difficult to control the mind. Yes. Even while chanting, we can't control it. We think it, it, it's the only a time of chanting. It gets so, it, it like keeps on running here and there. The most of the things comes to the mind then only. It's true, right? Yeah. It's but still true. we need to keep on hearing and chanting as you always say. Yeah. We have and to we will see bring it back. Gradually. Yeah. And we will see gradually, gradually the mind will quieten. It will. Mm. Why? Because see, the fan is going full speed. But once you take out the plug, it will not stop immediately. But it yes. will stop. It will stop. Yes. How long can it continue if you take out the plug? So just continue. Yeah, for some time. It. Not more than that. Only for some time. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. just continue hearing and chanting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.